Morning everyone, it is uh, Saturday morning, 20th of July, just after 7 o'clock there, about quarter 7 or something. You might be able to hear the rain on the roof, I don't know. Back to the rain. Why I'm saying back to the rain never really went away. Poor morning yesterday morning, Friday was meant to be dry. Uh, poor start to the day, it was lunchtime before it started to dry it off. And then we had a grand afternoon. Bit of a breeze and dry and jobs getting done and happy days. But back to a very wet day forecast today and it's shaping up that way. Look, it's just making things difficult now in terms of getting uh, through the list of jobs we have and continually wet and having to wear wet gear in the middle of July is an absolute pain in the hole. Um, it's staying quite mild, so you're sweating because you've wet gear on you. If you don't have it on you, you're getting wet with rain. So, perfect storm of nonsense. Saturday morning, Fiona and Ellen are away to Ballon Kill for county training. So you've had a soccer bits in between. Merlin might have football. I don't know if she's going to go to it in the way. It's for myself and Oscar and Merlin. If she's not doing for football, try and get a few jobs done. Totally weather dependent. If it's raining, sure they may stay at home. And I'll do a bit of tractoring. Cows are still absolutely motoring through grass. The feeding just doesn't seem to be in it at the moment. The density and stuff is just not there. A good 12 hour strip yesterday and the same last night. And I thought there'd be loads left for them to uh, go on it today. But there was nothing. <laughs> they did everything. So, yeah, we have bales in and out. But I think the way we're shaping up now, trying to build a bit of grass ahead of us, will just um, might open the pit. Get out some in last year's first cut silage. It's quite dry, so intakes will be super. So I think we'll just make that decision now in the next couple of days. Get the diet wagon on and maybe feed a bit of it out in the field. But if the weather continues like this, we'll have to feed it in the yard and the round feeders or something. So it's an absolute pain in the neck. Cows are doing okay otherwise, in fairness, you know, yield is holding reasonably well. Solids are staying good, cell count is super. Yeah, calves, yeah, it's just hard on them. It's just miserable, you know, they're wet all the time, so there's a huge energy requirement just to keep themselves alive and <laughs> warm and stuff, you know, and um, which is just, ah, it's tough going now. You know, yeah, it's just making things awkward and hard, you know. Grass has responded a little bit from the fertilizer, but sure, just needs dry feet now. That's it, lads. Just uh, drive it on, special can. A row and a half milked. Power goes. Won't be back till nine o'clock or afterwards. Generator time. Load of joys. I'm setting up the fence for the cows this evening over there at the houses. And of course they heard the bike and saw me and lost their bovine minds thinking they were getting a fresh move. So lots of noise now, getting them in for milking. They were here just cleaning off this multi-species paddock that they didn't graze out properly about a fortnight ago. So I left them in out there with a bit of shelter. We had a horrible morning this morning, loads of rain. So I'm back in short sleeves now because it's very humid, but as you can see, there ain't no blue sky. So we've got noisy cows, they have a full paddock for themselves now this evening. Dry meal in the parlour, bale of silage in the yard as they're walking out. Come on girls, come on, come on, come on. Everyone letting Joe know they're not happy. To wet Joe, didn't like being on that. What's going down? We heard you on the bike. Where's the fresh grass? Come on. Get them in now to be okay. And as I said about being in my short sleeves, it's starting to rain. Whoop de doo. I don't know if you can actually see them there, but the sky is a swarm with, you might see them there, biting flies. Really going to regret wearing my short sleeve soon. Bit of bullying activity or something there now. Not what you want to see when breathing's ah. over two weeks at this stage. Ah. Nothing we can do about it, we will have empty cows, unfortunately. Come on, come on, come on! Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. But let's go, shall we? Bring them on, Rosie! As I've said before, a noisy cow is an unhappy cow, she's not going to bow all into the tank. But it's just a short term annoyance, hopefully. Our cow condition has dropped a little bit. Kind of understandable in the conditions, you know, having to work very, very hard to uh, get dry matter into them, and if you're pushing them anyway hard at all to clean out paddocks and stuff, 
it's hard on them, so we'll keep lots of grub into them now. And come on, Red, last one I would have had it all of the time. Come on, girl. That cow went down with grass tight knee two years ago now, maybe three years ago. Just came into the into the collecting yard one morning. Went down having like a epileptic fit, flat out. Thankfully, the vet was on hand to get out really, really quickly, and she made a recovery. A hundred percent recovery. Tetany, they can die in the blink of an eye. You really have to treat them quickly. Something that they're prone to for the rest of their lives then. So keep an eye on her. She's a good cow. Our pregnancy results are in from when we look record, we got the cows tested through the milk. But there was 139 cows tested. We missed one in the sampling that evening myself and Fiona. Came back uh, really, really, really good results. I'm delighted with them. So there was 29, sorry, 20 cows, uh, seven to be rechecked and 13 not in calf. And then everything else is in calf. Pregnancy test is done through the milk. I think it's based on hormone levels or something in there. I'm not 100% sure of the technology. And um, our protein levels or something. Uh, it's like 119 cows, the calf in the first six weeks. Um, of them, 13 that aren't pregnant or are going by that test, they mightn't just be in calf long enough for them to be picked up on the test. Uh, the seven that's to be rechecked is something similar. So um, we more than likely would scan the whole herd uh, in September time. And because unfortunately, Mother Nature can deal a hand and some of them ladies that were tested through the milk as pregnant can be empty come September to lose uh, uh, they lose the pregnancy or whatever, you know, that happens a little bit. Uh, of the 20 that aren't in calf now, you would be really hoping to pick up the seven that it says to recheck and maybe a few of the non-pregnant ones as well. So, yeah, really happy with them results. I was panicking there week four, week five of breeding that we were having a large amount of repeats. Yeah, it's it's come worked out really well. We used 182... You da- meant 82 dairy straws. Dairy straws, I think, uh, 86 and two conventional. Going on the pregnancy results, there's 46 dairy calves due, so just over 50%, which is kind of not or the run of the mill for uh, sex semen on cows. And so happy with that. It's up from last year. We were down at 45%, I think, last year, so conception rate uh, on sex semen. So it's up from last year, so that's really positive. To show you how ground conditions are ga- starting to get soft, even here in our dry farm, cows are standing along the fence line there for. I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes at most. Ball let me there while I was moving the fence. As you can see, they have brown tracks already in the in the field. So that's not good. 20th July. <laughs> Saturday evening, 20th July. Just go milking, it's half four there. So no, for the short sleeves lasted about 10 minutes. And temperatures dropped a couple of degrees. We will soldier on, boys. We will soldier on. Sunday morning, the 21st of July, All Ireland hurling final day. They're out of the back of the house last night, waiting patiently on me to let them down to the yard now. Just gone half six. Morning, cows. Leaving the last few cows having a bite of nice dry bale sliders before they head out. Come on, girls, there's second half extra time in the holiday. We've got the left to watch. Come on, go, girls, come on. Tasty stuff, girl. We made 10 bales of silage off the top of the multi species there a couple of weeks ago. It's really, really dry. That's a dock leaf, but uh, yeah, cows are loving it. Helping increase the dry matter intake. Uh, this is the second bale in. We're just leaving it here in the collecting yard as the cows walk out. And they're nibbling at it and getting them out full on the way out. Change from having them up on the bank up over there. Um, cows are standing around a lot and it's getting quite mucky that it was wet. So we just left them here now and they're getting mouthfuls of the go. Keeping them happy, much more content the last two days. I said sit down there now for the last minute before we get stuck into an hour of catch up on laundry. Thanks, cuz 
Here's a small back. I'm just home from Dublin. I went to visit my parents with the kids. I get a suitcase off them for mine and Joel's holiday. And we're literally just back. I have some pizza in a lunchbox. Fionn is just gone to milk the cows. Joe is up the other end of the farm fencing. And I am having another day of topping. This is the one of the first fields I think I topped back in June. And I've been home for half six to bring the kids to football. So I better get going. Evening everyone, it's uh, about half seven, the Monday evening, the 22nd of July. Just after setting them two posts in concrete there, continuing my <laughs> securing the farm boundary. I'm up here, the far end of the farm, cows are grazing here late, uh, early last week and all over the far side there, set the outer gate up. Um, oh, it's been a middling mess of sort of a day, had lots of machinery problems and different yokes to go and start, all that sort of nonsense. And typical Monday blues, feeling very woe with Joe and uh, had a phone call this afternoon then about the possible cancellation of our under-15 championship match on Wednesday um, due to a bereavement and it brought home how life is so fleeting and reality really just crashed in. Um, an absolute horrendous situation and our thoughts and condolences and sympathies are with the feeling and Hobson families. Um, you're super people and we're so, so sorry for your loss. Um, yeah, hug your loved ones tonight. Enjoy every minute. I've like enough done for today now. I'm gonna go up to the football field, go home, get a bit of grub, maybe go up to the football field. Our miners are playing in their second round of the championship. Fiona's up there, togged out the goose, even though he's not meant to be. Um, stay safe, everyone. Stay safe. Good morning, everyone. Tuesday, the 23rd of July, just after uh, 7 o'clock. Cows in, going and getting the milk. Um, we had a insanely phenomenal amount of rain fall. Yesterday evening, it was just biblical <laughs> by all proportions. Uh, I got up to the football field to watch the minors and about, uh, we got there about 15 minutes into the match, 10 minutes into the match. And within two or three minutes to start the rain and holy moly, it did rain. Wow. Just phenomenal. Absolutely insane. The mud rain fell. Uh, I actually meant to take a picture of the gauge coming out past it this morning. It had tipped over and was overflowing. So, um, easily had 25, 26 mil rain. Easy. Power knocked out. Seems to be an ongoing thing with DSB in our area at the moment. Anytime he thinks about rain and the power seems to go. Amazon coming down our yard this evening. The rain for the last hour and a half has been absolutely insane. I can't do anything about that, lads. Where, what shore are we meant to get that into? Just to thank him, the collecting yard is full now again. I was like crowned rats. I'm sure the cows and in-cow peppers are the same. We'll check them now after milking. The ground conditions will be tricky after that rain last week. And um, there was some topping planned for today, so I might leave that off to a little bit later. Uh, plans for today. Fionn and Ellen are away uh, county footballing again. Fionn is a camp. Oh, congratulations to Oscar and under 13 there last night to play the in Ockram. Had a good win by all accounts, so and escaped most of the rain, which was good. Usual Monday, or sorry, Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> Getting on with jobs, dodging the showers if there is any, and seeing how we go. Drive it on. Fiona's at his county camp, I'm just out for a walk. There's a heavy cloud hanging over Wicklow today. I suppose it's rural Ireland life. If you're connected with agriculture and GAA, everybody knows you. And um, yesterday morning was all over the news that a little girl same age as our daughter, so I have 11. She passed away on the last day of her summer holiday in, in Spain. And um, the parents would have strong connections with GA and agriculture through their work and their children. And we would know some of their friends quite well. It's where um, Ireland's rural community is unique. Got everything, everybody knows everyone and everything is so uh, widely felt across the community. New gates up, have the full crew. 
So, gates up in the back lane. Fortunately, our one on the right hand side, the ground is quite soft. Um, all last night's rain hasn't helped our concrete whole post is after moving a little bit. But look, it's not going to come down. Gals hurt me out, so happy days. Sent the girls to get some water down with the lower ditch. Here comes Saif. Myrna's meant to be helping. Let me save the Another one done. Huh? Morning everyone, it's Wednesday the 24th of July. Caltrain heading down to the yard there. It's just about time seven or something. Um, cows finished grazing up here at the back of the houses now, so we'll go and get this paddock. Topped off today, try and get a handle on that rag work and stuff again and get our prime our leased in bull, the Hereford, went back to its owner tonight. The owner actually bought our two homebred shorthorn bulls as well, so we are officially a bullless farm. Okay, take two. I had just presumed that Joe had put the part, the pipe, into the boot, and I drove 20 minutes to Blessington. The part was not in the boot, so I drove 20 minutes home, got the part, and I'm back here again. So an hour driving. <sighs> Anyway, Morning everyone, it's uh, Thursday the 25th of July, just 7 o'clock while making the cows here now. Weather continues to be wet. Grass grows after taking a the bounce there uh, over the last four or five days. We have our contractor booked in for the second good silage and hopefully sometime over the weekend maybe it's to dry up a little bit, so maybe Sunday, Monday. So and Ellen are getting off farm today for a few hours, uh, up, up in there this afternoon, so it's going to be Good for the head, and uh, if you want to milk the cows this evening, what else is going on? Yeah, it's just been a mad old week. Um, as I said in a few other videos and stuff, there's a cloud hanging around, and heads just aren't in the game, which is understandable. Friday morning, the 26th of July. Cows coming in. Strange. Shiny golden orb in the sky. Oh, it's gonna be a cracker. Oh, the cows are coming up here. You no, know, just being done. It's a nice hell day. You know, just feeding all the calves, or as dad calls them, calves. So just going to hit this gate latch to uh, the main gates going into the farmyard from uh, Budunvan Engineering. So you just pop that guy out there. And the gate opens. The gates are open. Swing whichever way they want. And then you just secure them back. Latch across. Wow, that's a gift of a job. Stuff. I have a leg to go on the bottom here now that'll hold that longer gate in the ground, stop it swinging. Uh, evening everyone, it's Friday evening. Uh, just four o'clock, Friday the 26th of July. Just going back in the cows here now. Um, so I have a camogie this evening there in Ockram, so I'm going to get these cows milked and go and watch our place on camogie. It's Friday evening, I'm just walking down to look with Joe and finish up from so he can get on the road with Saib over the other side of the county for a camogie match. I'm not going because I'm over again for the third time this week with Fionn for his county training. A mad L week. I was editing this video today and I did an interview for one of the Sunday papers. And my sister just contacted me there as well that our one of our childhood neighbours who lives in England last night was leaving his local pub. A car came up onto the footpath 
around the corner, down to the footpath, and their neighbour was killed. Absolutely crazy, poor family. That's actually the fourth death this week. Two neighbours, granny of our cousin, for Clodophila. And Fionn has gone out on his mountain bike to meet up with his friends. They do that every few weeks. So boy, did he get a lecture about road safety. And listen, I'm a worrier anyway. People think I'm over the top sometimes. Joe, I know joking. I'm over the top sometimes. I've had them wearing helmets and doing things on the farm before it was um, it was law. And there's a lot more stuff that I'd love to have them do. It's a constant battle. When you don't grow up on a farm, you see the dangers way more than they see them. They're so used to seeing them. Actually, I think it's farm safety week this week. It is because I'm not from a farm background. I think I notice all these things, all these hazards and dangers that he's lived with his whole life and don't happen. And anyway, let's go, Matt. Right there. Joe, it's farm safety week. Did you know it? No, I didn't. You've had two farm accidents in your lifetime one on this farm and one on the farm in Arizona, was it? Yeah. All right, what were they? I had one in Arizona. I was driving a quad with a trailer behind us and took a corner and went around the pillar of a pen to entice and the uh, trailer wheel caught the pillar and I knew nothing until I had quad handlebars into my mouth and a uh, very sore forearm, sore shin. Uh, I ended up losing a front tooth into my lip. I had to get nine stitches, had to get her placed in front tooth. Um, a fine big scar and a fat scar tissue on my lip now for the rest of my days. Very lucky though. Very, very lucky. No helmet, no nothing back then. I was 19 at the time. So when I made you get a helmet for the quad, you didn't fight me on it because of that? Well, I didn't, yeah, uh, so it was moving with the times as well, like... Um, I know it's law now, but we've yeah, had it for... Yeah, three we years had the Gator Polaris thing before that that had a cab on it and obviously more secure if you thought you were going to roll over or something that with the frame around you, but uh, on a quad there's nothing like... So yeah, helmet. And the second... Uh, we were doing a bit of work there in the garden, myself and my dad, putting in sewage pipes and uh, he hit me in the face with the bucket of the backhoe on the digger. Uh, totally accidental, he was going one way and I was going the same way, or going the other way and fractured my eye socket, split my eyelids another nine or ten stitches later. Very lucky. I yeah, shouldn't what I... we've learned from that is you wear a high vis when you're yeah. working with someone else. Yeah. And uh, it was totally my fault. He was in control of the machine and didn't do anything wrong. I was in the way. I shouldn't have been anywhere near the bucket while it was operating. Been too lax around. Machine. Totally, yeah, yeah, totally. Look, just be safe. On farms, you get complacent. If they're busy, etc., they're, they're excuses that aren't excuses. You shouldn't, you know, just try and be safe. Think of what, who's at home. Think of where you're going. Think of what's left behind if you're not there anymore. One example I give is a couple of winters ago, I was putting a feed, bale of silage out against the feed barrier for the cows. And uh, I think there had been an accident or something the week before, a farmer was crushed by a bale. And uh, I went in to go around the front of the bale, between the bale and the feed barrier. No reason, no need, no way early words. And because of what had happened, I paused and took a second and went, that is extremely unsafe. Even though the bale was very secure in the front of the digger. So I just went out and reached around, went around the other side and reached around and so much more safe. So just pause two or three seconds before you do a job. It's not going to impact your day greatly, but it could save your life and save a lot of grief for a lot of people. And try and pass those messages on to your kids. I'm always trying to wrap on to the kids. I think I'm not supposed to yeah, like no, they can learn from our mistakes. No job, no task is too important or that important that you should be taking risks. Um, we do them. We just really have to wise ourselves up and... Completing your farm safety statements, going through all the nuts and bolts and things that can go wrong really opens your eyes about what you should be doing or shouldn't do. So that's vitally important. It's also a legal requirement. But um, I'm part of your board via audit that you have it done. And um, really just makes you think about what's going on. All right, so we'll see you next week. Drive it on. Drive it on. That bin needs to be empties. Yeah. About a week ago. Yeah,